This is part one of a two-part series on electrochemistry. And we'll start by talking about electrochemical cells. Uh, there are two types of electrochemical cells. The first one is called voltaic. It's also called galvanic. And it uses a spontaneous electrochemical reaction to generate current. And secondly, the electrolytic cell uh, is the opposite. It is a non-spontaneous reaction. And you have to drive it with a, a, some kind of a current, some kind of a battery system. So we're going to spend a lot of time on the voltaic cell. Right at the end of part two, we'll talk about electrolytic cells, um, which are very useful if you, if you want to perhaps uh, do electroplating, uh, you know, like a metal <clears throat> onto a surface, things like that. And I'll show you that later. All right, I figured I'd start here with the history of the voltaic cell, also called the galvanic cell. And um, this is a picture of the very first battery that was developed by Volta in 1799. And uh, it's in a museum in um, Switzerland, I believe, near Lake Como. I think I just read that. Uh, and... <coughs> Well, he was Italian, so probably right in the border between Italy and Switzerland in that area near Lake Como. Anyway, um, so this is the setup, and you can see that there are these discs, and here's a kind of diagram on the left, uh, on the right hand side of what it is. You have a copper plate, very th actually it's more like a very thin, you know, strip of copper. And then you alternate it with zinc. So copper, zinc, copper, zinc, like that. And then uh, in between the blue here is some tissue or some cloth that's been soaked in an electrolyte system. If it's uh, got some acid in it, a little bit of acid in there, that's going to um, facilitate this reaction. <clears throat> so these things right here <laughs> are the electrodes. And you um, can hook that up to a voltmeter. In fact, I think that's the last. Uh, Oops, the last picture here where you've got it hooked up to a voltmeter and you can see that there is electrical current and it's creating a um, reading on the voltmeter which is just kind of in the series with the with the pile, the voltaic pile, that's what it's called. So um, Volta, you know, used his fingers <laughs> and he, he he put one finger on top of the pile and one at the bottom of the pile, or alternately, he put them, he put his fingers on these two electrodes, uh, the here and here, and it caused a shock. And he would build them up. If he got uh, past 20 of these uh, strips in the pile, then it would just be too t painful for him to feel, you know, the the shock and the electrons flowing to him and through him. <clears throat> But also, he would, um, there's photos of it, <laughs> I decided not to show it, but hook up uh, frog's legs to the electrodes. Actually, they kind of hung on the side here, so you have a frog leg. And as soon as the circuit was completed, there'd be energy then to cause contraction of the muscle, and you could see the uh, frog's leg muscle move, proof that the electrons were, were moving and causing the effect. <clears throat> All right, so then, uh, the reaction is going to be, it's not the zinc and the copper that's reacting, it's actually the zinc reacting with some H+, which would be in that tissue, uh, soaked with um, an, an electrolyte and so a small bit of acid. So it's an oxidation reduction reaction where zinc starts out with zero oxidation number, ends up with plus two, it does so by losing two electrons, so that's oxidation. And then the H plus takes the electrons and converts that to H2. So that's going to be the reduction half reaction. And um, zinc uh, generates the electrons. Copper is just, there's the conductor. And the voltage, not what you're reading in this uh, photo here, but the voltage for this reaction is 0.76. Um, so then other examples of voltaic cells are just some simple batteries. You have your car battery. Actually, that one's a little bit complicated. There's numerous reactions that take place. 
involving lead and other electrolytes. Uh, watch batteries, a little bit simpler. The Energizer batteries as well, so things that you're familiar with are operating on this uh, principle here. All right, so let's just review these uh, reactions. Just, just talking about the first one there, which is uh, from the voltaic pile. So if you have zinc solid plus 2H plus aqueous, forming zinc 2 plus plus H2, then the oxidation number for zinc is zero because it's an element in its el elemental form. For zinc 2 plus, it's plus 2. Uh, so the oxidation number equals the charge. For hydrogen, H2 is 0. And for hydrogen plus, it's going to be plus 1. So you would, um, just a little review here. So which is which, first of all? The 0 going to plus 2, that's going to be the oxidation. The plus 1 going to 0 is the reduction, so it's becoming more negative for the reduction. That's how I always remember it. <clears throat> so then you can uh, look at the exchange of the electrons. I do reduction minus oxidation. So you have two hydrogen atoms here, and so 2 times 0. And then minus the left-hand side for hydrogen is going to be 2 times plus 1. So this is negative 2 electrons associated with reduction. <clears throat> and then for the oxidation, you take 1 zinc, and it's got a plus 2. This is on the right-hand side. And then you're going to subtract <clears throat> 1 zinc that's 0. So this is going to be plus 2 electrons. That'll be for the oxidation. All right, for the second one, it's similar. Probably don't need to do this one. This one's zinc solid plus copper 2. Form zinc solid plus copper solid. And uh, use a different color here. We have 0 for zinc plus 2 for copper 2 plus 2 for zinc 2 and 0 for copper solid. So you've got these connections there, and the reduction is going to be when 2 goes to 0. So this is the reduction. The oxidation, it becomes positive. It goes from 0 to 2, <clears throat> to plus 2. All right, and then the math again would be, let's do reduction first. So 1 for the copper times 0 minus 1 which for copper 2, and so this is going to be equal to negative 2 electrons, so that's going to be the reduction. And then for zinc, you have 1 zinc with a 2 plus on the product side, subtracting 1 with 0 on the um, reactant side, so this is going to be plus 2 electrons. So they both turned out to be 2, but it doesn't have to be 2, it could be 5, 6, you know, any, any, any number to be determined. All right, it's so just a little review there for some simple ones. You've already learned the more complicated redox reaction balancing. Hopefully you've looked at that already. All right, now it gets a little bit more interesting. This is called the Daniel cell. It's not always exactly how it's set up in the lab. Sometimes these beakers, one is like inside the other, and so it's a much more uh, compact system but to look at it on a large scale is uh, very useful and you should be able to draw these. Okay, so this is for the spontaneous voltaic or galvanic cell. And you can see here that um, <clears throat> there is a solution that has zinc two in it, zinc sulfate, and then there's a metal strip called the electrode, which is zinc solid. So the reaction on the bottom represents the electrode and the solution, and um, the fact that uh, when you get zinc 2, you're going to get two electrons as well. On the right hand side, you got a piece of solid copper, and then you got some copper sulfate, which is in the form 2 plus. So this 2 plus wants the electrons. And let me write all over this and mess it up. <clears throat> all right, so on the left hand side, you have zinc, and by the way, this is oxidation, this one is reduction. 
The convention is to put the oxidation on the left-hand side, but you don't always see it that way. I, t I try to kind of maintain that, um, that process so that uh, I don't mix myself up. <laughs> I don't mix you guys up either. So the process here is some of the zinc, you know, when this is set up, there's this potential between zinc and copper. And zinc will, the, the actual metal electrode will become zinc 2 plus as electrons move up the electrode and into the wire and over to the copper. All right, so the zinc is becoming 2 plus, which is exactly what we have written here. Now, in this case, you've got copper sulfate, so you've got copper 2 plus in solution. And down come the electron, the elect, yeah, electrons, they're coming through the wire. Now they're at the electrode, and I'm drawing them as if they're at the surface of the electrode. So you get all these, these negative charges here from the electrons. So the copper 2 plus <clears throat> wants those and will grab them, and copper 2 plus plus 2 electrons forms copper solid. So in time, <clears throat> you're going to see a buildup of more copper at the electrode. And on the left-hand side, the zinc became zinc 2. So in time, you'll see kind of a disintegration of the electrode itself as it goes, as it reacts. <clears throat> All right, so this is the Daniel cell. And... Um, also, there is what's called a salt bridge right here, and the salt bridge is a, you know, it's not like this now, but probably in the early days, this was like a glass tube that the glass blower made. I'm sure now they're made out of metal. <clears throat> but uh, you fill it with some tissue that's been soaked in, in this example, potassium nitrate, some kind of a salt. And the salt bridge is going to serve to keep the system electrically neutral. So the idea here is that as the zinc 2 plus is building up here, there has to be some anion that moves in to keep it electrically balanced. So um, the salt bridge will bring in the nitrates from potassium nitrate to balance out the 2 plus zinc that's building up. So in other words, the reaction will completely shut down if your 2 plus is building up and then there's no counter ion. So then on the other side, let me make it green here. So uh, you're getting a, let's see, you're getting a loss of the copper 2 plus, right? So it's becoming the other half of this is the SO4, right? Because it's, it's copper sulfate. So there's uh, two minus. So as the copper two plus disappears, you get a more of a buildup of the copper sulfate. I mean, of the sulfate, sorry. And so um, positive charge has to move in here. And this is going to be in the form of sodium. So you would need two sodiums for every sulfate. So this is going on at the same time that the electrons are moving and plating copper solid on the electrode and all that. It's all happening at the same time. And if you actually do the experiment where you pull this salt bridge out, the reaction will stop. And also, usually, there's a voltmeter in here, so you can measure the voltage <coughs> for the reaction. All right, now there's a notation besides... Okay, you can write the overall reaction, which is going to be zinc solid plus copper 2 forms zinc 2 plus copper solid. So that's one way to do it. The second way to do it is to break it into half reactions. So zinc solid, and all three forms here are um, useful. And then copper 2. Okay, and so that's the first two. 
And there is another one, another way to do this, and this is called the um, uh, this electrochemical notation. Or cell notation. And this is the one that the electrochemists use. All right, and it, you can kind of pull it eas more easily from this, the way it's written in number two here in the half reactions. So the half reaction for the oxidation, this is oxidation, this is reduction. So you start with a zinc solid on the left. You put a vertical line there to tell you that there's a phase, to say that there's a phase change, and it goes to zinc 2 plus aqueous. So you can see in the half, right, we're putting the oxidation on the left, and it's zinc solid going to zinc 2, and there's a phase difference. One is a solid, one is a solution, so you put that vertical line. All right, then you have the double line. This is for the salt bridge. That's present as well. And then you go to the rest of it, it'll be copper 2 forming copper solid. <clears throat> so copper 2 plus um, and physically different phase from copper solid. So you have the anode on the left, this is the oxidation. And you have the cathode on the right, and this is the reduction. So the convention is oxidation left um, and uh, cathode on the right-hand side. I forgot to mention one thing here. What was it? Um, oh, yeah. So in the cell here, the zinc, this is the, the anode, this is the oxidation. And there's the cathode, that's the reduction. Okay. In this case, the cathode is positive. In something like the cathode ray tube, the cathode is negative. So it's interesting that electrochemical conventions are opposite. And maybe some ways that you learned about it in physics as well <clears throat> for cathode and anode. Anyway, remember that. And let's see, I think that's it for this. So let us take a moment, and instead of just having a drawing already done for us, let's um, <clears throat> do one ourselves. This one, sketch and label the voltaic cell or the Daniel cell, same thing. <clears throat> we have cadmium metal and cadmium nitrate, silver metal and silver nitrate. So this is going to have two beakers. And the electrodes connected to a voltmeter. And you've also got the um, salt bridge. I could clean this up a little bit and get rid of these overlapping lines, but I'm not going to do that. Okay, so on the left-hand side, you have cadmium nitrate. Solution. And then the cadmium uh, electrode is the metal strip. On the right-hand side, you have a silver strip. And then you've got silver plus an NO3 minus. All right, so then, make it bigger. So your half reactions here, on the left, which is the oxidation, reduction on the right, you have cadmium solid from the strip, forming cadmium 2 plus aqueous plus 2 electrons. That is oxidation. On the right-hand side, you have silver plus aqueous plus an electron forming silver solid reduction. So then if you wanted to, so the electrons are going in this direction, 
from left to right because I set it up that way. I, I already knew the answer. There's no way you could predict at this point which goes on which side. So I led you to the right answer. You'll see later how to do it. And um, what else? So you've got cadmium becoming cadmium 2 plus. And here you have silver becoming silver, right? So you get a same as last example. You get a buildup of silver on the right. You get a loss of the cadmium strip over time. And the electrons are moving through the wire. And then maybe you've got some sodium chloride in here. So as the cadmium tube builds up, the chlorides are going to come into this side. And as the Ag plus disappears, some sodium plus is going to come through. The salt bridge. <clears throat> All right, so if we were going to write, use the electrochemical notation, we would say cadmium solid, cadmium 2 plus aqueous, salt bridge, silver plus aqueous, um, phase change, and silver solid for that. But also, um, you can add the, this is the notation, but you can also just add those half, re there's three representations, right? The half reactions, the cell notation, and then you can just add up the reactions from one, part one, number one. <clears throat> so here it's gonna be, oops. Cadmium solid plus silver plus aqueous forms cadmium two plus Pardon my AQs. <laughs> they get worse <laughs> over time. Uh, plus silver solid. All right now here's where you balance. You don't you do not put coefficients into this one, but you do when you balance the equation. So to have the same number of electrons lost and gained, they have to be equal. Then, since you have cadmium with two electrons, you have to have two silvers, because each silver only has one. Okay, so you put the coefficients in the balanced chemical equation, and you don't do it, well, you can do, I don't know. You could put the twos in here, I suppose. But you don't do it for the electrochemical reaction. <clears throat> yeah. The twos here um, at the top, this one, um, you know, for balance, you'd put them in. But, I mean, if you look it up in the table, which I'm going to show you, you, the twos are not there. So you could leave them out. You probably should leave them out now that I'm thinking about it. Sorry. All right. Now, next is this thing called the hydrogen electrode. And it's... Um, it's a unique system because it has hydrogen gas as part of it. And um, the picture on the left here is kind of a blow up of it, so you can look at the details. But um, on the right hand side, in fact, you've got. Similar to what we just looked at. Um, but in this case, you've got this very unusual hydrogen. Uh, half half reaction cell uh, on the right there. Okay, so let's talk about that. Um, the reaction is to is for well, okay. Look at it. Let's see, there's two ways to write it. Okay, so you can write it as two H plus uh, plus two electrons forming H two, or you could write it in reverse H two forming H plus plus two H plus plus two electrons. And so which way the reaction goes depends on uh, what it's hooked up to here. So in some cases, the electrons will flow to it. In other cases, the electrons will flow um, towards the hydrogen cell. So it just depends on what this is. <clears throat> okay, so let's look at the blow up of it here. Oops, let's do that. All right, so this is a... Um, piece of platinum wire and then a piece of platinum foil looks just like aluminum foil and this is an inverted tube which has a port here 
and it is possible to blow hydrogen gas through it from a tank and bubble hydrogen in the platinum. It looks like it's only about halfway. I don't know why. That, that's a weird picture in my opinion. I would think the solution inside that tube would be here as well. <clears throat> But anyway, the platinum, it shows just part of it's uh, submerged here in the liquid, but I, I think the whole thing is, that's my issue here. <laughs> By the way, it's at 101,325 pascals is one atmosphere, and then one mole per cubic decimeter is one molar. All right, so you got HCl here, that's the solution, and so there's H+. Plus inside the inverted tube, inside the beaker, and then you're blowing hydrogen gas. It's, I don't know, this is a weird setup. So oftentimes, it's a tube that blows the hydrogen gas through and then it escapes through the port, but it doesn't matter. Really Main thing is it's got, you see the bubbles here, it's got some hydrogen bubbles. So there is then this uh, reaction that can take place, which is, <clears throat> You know, the, the, a, the H plus in the solution can pick up the electrons if the electrons happen to be... And by the way, the platinum is just a conductor. It's not involved in the reaction. All it's doing is bringing the electrons down so that the H plus can grab and make H2, right? And in the other situation, it's the reverse, right? So you can have, you can have the hydrogen bubbles reacting to make 2H plus uh, that way. Okay, so it actually doesn't look like this. It it looks, it's real skinny. It, it's just about the size of a pencil. And it's just got really tiny, you know, uh, platinum wire in there. And, uh, you know, the little bulb at the end of it just sits in the solution. So, um, actually, this is better than my drawings of this cell. But still, I don't think it's quite right. It, it's just real small. It just looks like a pencil in the analytical labs they use them. All right, so then um, which one is it? Is it, is it H plus making H2 or is it H2 making H plus? And again, it just depends on what the other half reaction is. So then, um, let's see, I wanted to give you the notation for um, both possibility, the electrochemical notation for both of these cases here. So if it is a cathode half reaction, then it's reduction. And you have two H plus, I'll leave off the phases here plus two electrons forms uh, H2. And by the way, when I'm typing this stuff up, I'm being lazy and not writing down the equilibrium sign. I'm just making all my arrows go to the right. And, um, but in the, if you look in different books, you'll see it either way. Sometimes you just see it as a single arrow and oftentimes as a double. But equilibrium is, is a way to discuss this. So it, it, there's equilibrium associated with this. All right, so the notation for this one is going to be H plus. You leave out your coefficients, and you write AQ, vertical line, and then you have H2. And then here's where you indicate that platinum is present, and it is um, the inert metal that just trans... Let me put a line here. That just uh, transports the electrons. So this, if this is the reduction, then your, your hydrogen cell would be on the right-hand side and the electrons would be flowing to it, so whatever this is. So you want to indicate um, that the salt bridge is here, and whatever the other half reaction is, you want to put the notation down for that. So we don't know what that is. You know, we'll be looking at some tables in a little while. So that would be how to do it for cathode, and then for the anode half reaction, I'm getting tired. Which is the oxidation? Then your your hydrogen cell is on the left hand side in that 
picture and you have the reverse reaction taking place that hydrogen gas is forming 2H plus plus two electrons. So you'd have the salt bridge would be here. You start with the platinum is always on the outside. So there's the platinum and then it's going to be the H2 gas change phase and then H plus aqueous and then that is connected to whatever it is that is uh, causing it to lose electrons. All right, so that is um, just more on the notation in general. <clears throat> One more uh, situation I'll make a note of here. Uh, there is a type of reduction. Well, it could go either way, but I'll write it as reduction. So you have iron 3 plus plus an electron forms iron 2 plus. Okay, so there's no phase change here. And when you write the electrochemical notation for this reaction, instead of writing a vertical line to indicate phase change, instead of doing that, you put a comma, and then it's iron 2 plus. And then in this case, it might be a platinum electrode there. That's moving the electrons back and forth. So the point of that last thing is you use a comma if the phases are the same. All right, on the next one, I skipped one. There we go. Okay. All right, a lot of uh, terms here. I'm going to talk to you about this stuff. <laughs> Let me start by making it a little bigger here. Uh, the electromotive force, uh, called the EMF, is a measurement of the energy that causes the current to flow through the wire or through the circuit. It can also be defined as the potential difference in charge between two points in a circuit or a cell. Uh, the electromotive force is also known as the voltage and it's measured in volts. So sometimes we call it EMF, sometimes we call it voltage. And for what we're doing, so you have three symbols here, the EMF, you have the voltage, so the units would be volts, and then also there's another notation, E cell. So the little zero there means standard conditions, 298 Kelvin, one atmosphere, and the word cell means for the complete reaction, the oxidation half reaction, and the reduction half reaction. So that when you see the word cell there, that means for the entire electrochemical reaction. All right, we'll be working on that. So uh, just some analogies here. We know that heat flows from a high temperature source to a low temperature source. We know that gas flows from a high pressure source to a low pressure source. Similar, the electrons will flow from a high electric potential source to a low electric potential source. So it's the electrons that flow when there's a potential difference and uh, they can do work when they flow through the wire. So you could put a light bulb in there. Instead of putting the voltmeter in there, you could put a, a light bulb in there. And the light bulb would light and there's work associated with the electron flow. So here's how you calculate work. And uh, W for work, it's equal to charge times that potential difference. So we use the symbols Q and V. And uh, the unit for work here is gonna be Joule. The unit for charge is gonna be Coulomb. And the unit for volt, voltage will be volt. And so you come up with this kind of important uh, connection here with the units that a Joule is equal to a Coulomb volt, and we will use that as we proceed. <clears throat> okay, then the last part here is, what else we got? So the charge, so okay, work is Q times V. So here's Q, that's the charge, right? So it's the charge. And it's equal to the number of moles of electrons that pass through the wire times Faraday's constant. The symbols are N for the moles, F for Faraday's constant, 
and Faraday's constant is the charge associated with one mole and then you just multiply that times the number of moles of electrons that you have and um, that's how you get the overall charge. So this is an important number. I'm sure you'll have it in front of you for your tests, but uh, this is a good one to remember. 96,500 coulombs for every one mole of an electron. So that's the charge, 9.65 10 to the fourth coulombs for one mole of an electron. All right, so then you can say work is Q, which is NF times V, and you put a negative sign in there. That's a thermodynamic thing where we say that uh, <clears throat> works done by the system. So work then is negative moles of electrons times Faraday's constant times the voltage. And then we can just substitute in E cell uh, instead so if we want to. All right, so then... Oops. On the next slide, we're going to calculate the work that can be obtained from the following reaction. In the voltaic cell, one half a gram of hydrogen is consumed, and the measured voltage is 0.65. You can calculate that later. I'll be showing you how to do that, but right now it's just measured. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, so there's the reaction. We could write, just for practice here, we could write down the half reactions. mercury, liquid mercury. Um, that would be the reduction. And then the oxidation. Okay, I got a mistake here. Let me erase this hydrogen on top here. This is supposed to be mercury. Right there. Okay. All right, I should do that in black. So you have, um, now you have the hydrogen. Hydrogen gas gives up two electrons, forms 2H plus plus two electrons. Electrons on the right, that's gonna be the oxidation. <clears throat> the electrochemical notation, just, just to practice here. <laughs> you got your hydrogen cell there, so you gotta have some platinum, right? Platinum, and then it's going to be H2 gas, H plus without the coefficient, and um, this right here, sorry, that, that's one of those lines, make them bigger. Okay, and then you get mercury Two, two plus aqueous forming mercury liquid. So you have your oxidation on the left and your reduction on the right. Okay. All right, we didn't need any of that, but I thought we'd go through it again. <laughs> okay, so we're just going to calculate the work here. And the work is going to be equal to negative NF E cell. And you're given E cell because you don't know how to calculate it yet. So let's take half a gram of H2, convert it to moles, 2.02 .02 grams per mole. Then, um, let me back up here. This is moles of H2, okay. The next step is to say that, and this is the important part here, um, what we're doing is getting the moles of electrons. So you look to your, uh, one of these forms, it might probably this form, the half reaction form, and you see that there are two electrons associated with a mole. There are two electrons associated with one mole of hydrogen. So that's actually why you need to do that. You need to write that out. So there's going to be two moles of electrons for every one mole of H2. Okay, so these three together, this is N in the equation. And it's just not the, not the moles of hydrogen, it's the moles of electrons. 
All right, so you got to know what n is. Actually, n comes up twice. This is confusing, so let me say it here. n right here are the moles of electrons, and of course also corresponds to the number of moles, right? So it's confusing. So this is the number of moles of hydrogen, and then this right here is n. n equals 2. <laughs> you put them together, and then you have, uh, and if it were one mole, then you'd just say n equals 2 would be simple, but it's not one mole. But anyway, this is the n. I'm just going to go right there. That is confusing. You change the symbol there. Then Faraday's constant, um, 96,500, 9.65, 10 to the fourth coulombs um, per mole of electrons. And then the voltage is 0.65. All right, put that all together. And you have the grams cancel, the moles of hydrogen cancel, the moles of electrons cancels, and then you have a coulomb times a volt. A coulomb volt is a joule. So this works out fine. This is, the answer is going to be in joules. So this is going to be equal to, hold on, that's F, and that's E cell. And this is equal to negative 3.0 times 10 to the fourth joules. So half a gram of hydrogen, excuse me, will uh, do that much work. Okay, and then you can use uh, any amount you want to get as much work as you want out of the system. All right, now comes for the confusing part. Was that zinc? No, it was mercury. And I'll try to make it easy. So, if you have the zinc, we're going to do it again because I have a slot here. <laughs> zinc and hydrogen reaction. Did we just do that? Sorry. Okay, I don't know. I don't want to do it again. So, the zinc and hydrogen reaction is going to be. Um, Zinc solid plus 2H plus aqueous forms zinc 2 plus plus H2 gas. That's the overall reaction. If you break it into half reactions, it's going to be zinc solid form zinc 2 plus, plus 2 electrons, and I left out the aqueous there. And then it's going to be 2H plus aqueous plus 2 electrons forms hydrogen gas. The third one is the electrochemical notation, which is going to be um, zinc solid vertical line, zinc 2 plus aqueous, double line for salt bridge, H plus aqueous, vertical line, H2 gas, whoops, that's a vertical line, and then you got platinum. All right, so whatever you think you need. You've got these three different ways to uh, write out the reaction. I'm going to separate them because I don't have a lot of space. Okay, now we got to figure out how to use the tables and um, at this point all we know is that you can measure the voltage, measure the EMF, and so here are going to be the rules for um, how to put things into the table and figure out their voltages and so on. So, uh, the measured reaction is 0.76 for this reaction. The measured EMF is 0.76. Uh, the convention in the table is that you set the hydrogen potential to zero. It is not zero, but you call it zero, and you measure everything relative to that. That's the idea. <clears throat> Thermodynamics is like that in a lot of different uh, case situations, a lot of different instances. 
All right, now you've got here, you've got uh, on these half reactions, this one is written as a reduction already. And if you're gonna put these two half reactions in the table, you need to, f you need to write this one as reduction as well. So because it's oxidation, the electrons are on the right-hand side, but you have to flip it. So in the table, you're gonna see both zinc and hydrogen written this way. Uh, hydrogen is written as reduction, and now you have zinc written as reduction as well. So let's say, you know, the convention is that hydrogen's zero. Let's say we don't know what X is. I'm gonna add this information into the table, which is under construction. So then, um, here's where it gets confusing. So <clears throat> to get X from the measured potential, we're gonna say the measured potential, 0.76, is equal to the reduction potential for the reduction half reaction, by that I mean this one is reduction and this one is oxidation. So in other words, we've got for the reduction, it's written, it's in the table as it is reacting, where you get the 2H plus and the two electrons on the left. So this one, you're just going to say, you're going to add the zero for this one, two. And because this is written as reduction, you want to add your potentials together, but this is written backwards, right, for this particular system. So for our system, we've got the electrons on the right-hand side for zinc. In the table, they're written on the left. So you're going to add the two potentials, but you have to flip the reaction and you have to take the negative of the reduction potential for the oxidation half reaction. All right, so this means you'd have 0.76 measured is equal to zero, and you're adding the negative of what's in the table, so minus x. Solve for x and it's negative 0.7, oh, point, I think I made a mistake there. It's 0.76. <clears throat> Get rid of that zero, 0.76. Mm -hmm. And so then, uh, then you go back, that's X, and you want to put it here. So then this is the summary of what you would see in the table. You've got negative 0.76 for zinc. All right, now go back to our particular reaction. We're going to pull the numbers from the table. So E cell, which, you know, we already know the answer to, but let's say we didn't know it. You take the numbers from the table, you're going to have... Zero for the reduction. Hydrogen doesn't have to be hydrogen doesn't have to be zero, but that's for this one it is. <clears throat> and then you're going to add the negative of what's in the table to get the answer, which is plus seven six. So the measured voltage was positive, and for zinc in the table is negative. Okay. The more we play around with this, the better you're going to feel about it. But in general, if you have a positive uh, voltage then that means that it's a spontaneous reaction. If it's negative, it's non-spontaneous. All right, the div. Oh, I think we're okay. Wait a minute, what happened here? Next step then is to have an entire table of this, these half reactions. And um, the tables get bigger than this. So this starting up here uh, with um, 2.87, it's decreasing. And then this part of the table actually continues down here. So it's one long table. So it goes 0 0.52, 0 0.4, and it keeps getting negative. Notice you have zero for hydrogen. And after that, there's a lot of them that are negative relative to hydrogen. Okay, so this is very typical. I prefer to see this thing all in one row, but um, or one column. But uh, that's the way this one is. Okay, so uh, we're just going to look at a couple. We already know what zinc is. It's... Um, Negative 0.76, right? So that's zinc right there. <coughs> I guess that was the one that we just did. Yeah, it, it was, sorry. Two and copper, two to copper, one. I'm gonna find it, and I hope it's here. So iron, let's see. I thought I saw it earlier. That's iron three. Be careful, right? This one's iron three going to iron zero. We don't want that one. This is iron two going to iron zero. 
and let it be somewhere. <coughs> There it is right there. So it's 0.77. So the iron one is 0.77, and then the other one is copper, and copper is 0.34 right here, okay? So iron two going to iron three is the opposite, whoops, the opposite of what's here. So as written, it's negative 0.77. Solid, so we know the zinc is uh, negative 0.76, but again, it's written in the opposite direction. So you have um, zinc, we're looking for zinc solid going to zinc two, right? So, you, okay, so zinc two forming zinc solid is negative. Examples here. This is the last slide for this part one. And let's go ahead and calculate the voltages for these reactions. <clears throat> All right, so for the first one, we are looking for the zinc, zinc two plus reaction, half reaction, and then we're looking at the H plus and the H two reaction. So you could write them out as half reactions if you wanted to. Or you could just say that uh, zinc zero is going to two plus. That's the oxidation. Then you have H plus going to H two. That's the reduction. So remember hydrogen zero. <clears throat> so this one, so E cell will be equal to zero for the reduction because it's hydrogen. Then you're going to add the negative of what's in the table for zinc. Okay, so then that is uh, the you're going to take the neg the negative of what's in the table, and that's going to be equal to 0.76 volts. Now um, the other part of this that I'm just kind of hand waving here is that. Uh, The fact that when you find the ox, you know, you know what you know what you want for oxidation. So it is zinc going to zinc two. So when you go to the tables, you're not going to see zinc going to zinc two. You're going to see zinc two plus two electrons going to zinc as that's reduction, right? And then you have to flip it. So not only are you flipping the sign here, but you're actually flipping the half reaction. So let's look at the second one here. <coughs> Oops. <coughs> Excuse me. I better write it down below. So you get two Fe three plus plus copper forms two Fe two plus plus copper two. So you could break it up into half reactions. You could say two Fe three plus forms two Fe two plus and copper forms copper two plus. So in the case of the first one, you have to add, add an electron, right? It's going from three plus to two plus. In the case over here, you got uh, two electrons. So which one is reduction? It's the one that has, this is reduction, the one with the, uh, the electrons on the left-hand side. So in the table, you'll find this one as written, three plus going to two plus. Um, but in, for copper, you're gonna find copper two going to copper, so you have to look for it. And let's see if I can uh, remember that, okay. <laughs> Iron three to iron two. So that's what we want. So as written then, this one, the E zero, not the E cell, but just the E zero for the half reaction is 0 0.77. And then the reverse of this second one here 
is 0.34 so for us we've written it as oxidation so you really if you flip the reaction you have to flip the number in the table and then since you've taken the negative of it now you want to add them together so 0.77 minus 0.34 and that is equal to 0.43 volts you just you'll get used to it you'll, you'll find your own way to do this <laughs> just play around with it so 0.43 this is positive and spontaneous okay so that's that second one the third one is iron 2 and zinc so let's do another color here so fe2 plus i'll leave off the phases here plus zinc uh, 2 plus forms iron 3 plus plus zinc solid all right and then our iron 3 and iron 2 again so this time we are looking at iron 2 plus and that's going to form iron 3 plus plus an electron so that's oxidation and then you've got um, zinc 2 plus plus two electrons that's the reduction forming zinc solid that's the reduction okay so we're going to go to the table and look up these numbers <clears throat> remember them so iron 2 going to iron 3 and zinc 2 going to zinc as it's written here it it's negative 0.77 okay then zinc 2 going to take the negative again oh, wait a minute I got that backwards Let me look at that again. Sorry. All right, this is the reduction. Sorry, I'm uh, getting tired here. <clears throat> um, negative 0.76. So that's as written because it's reduction. Okay, so if you add these up, you're going to get a negative number here. And this is going to be 1.53 volts. So is this reaction going to happen? The answer is no. This is a non-spontaneous reaction. Notice they were all written backwards, right? Which made it confusing, but that can be the case sometimes. That's because it's got a negative voltage. All right, and then the last one, getting tiny there, is the opposite of number three. So this one is Fe three plus plus zinc forming Fe two plus plus zinc two. So it's the exact opposite of what we've got in this, this third one. So this time we're looking at iron 3 plus forming iron 2 plus. And you need an electron over here, right? And then um, you're looking at zinc solid forming zinc 2 plus and uh, two electrons there. And also, by the way, the thing about the coefficients, before I forget here, um, if you have coefficients, let's say, for example, this was a 2. It's not, but it, let's say it was. You do not multiply your voltage times 2. Voltage is an intrinsic property, thermodynamic equations are extrinsic the enthalpies in the delta g values and delta s values all depend on the coefficients they depend on how much um you know you have right your enthalpy gets doubled if you have two times whatever but for voltages no you do not multiply times coefficients <clears throat> all right anyway so we got now um <clears throat> this is going to be equal to positive 0.77 and then this one is negative. You're taking the negative of what's in the table because you flipped it. So then, 
the negative of negative 0.76 in the table. So this is going to make it positive 1.53 volts. So if you run the reaction this way, it's going to be spontaneous because it is positive voltage. All right, that's it for part one, and stay tuned for part two.